the Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, said, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand for our glory. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please sit for our first reading.
Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also the rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Our second reading is taken from uh, the first letter of John, chapter 2, beginning at verse 16. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
invite you to stand for the gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Now may the words of my lips, the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please do sit down. <laughs> there is a path, uh, a stream, I should say, that runs near our house and it winds its way through the housing estates in this little ribbon of woodland. And beside the stream, there is a path. And this is my go-to walk when I'm thinking. So I was there this week thinking about this morning. And as I was walking, a robin came and landed on a branch, just almost within touching distance. So I said, good morning, Robin, as you do. And I walked on. And a few seconds later, he landed on a branch just in front of me again. And I looked round. Yes, it was the same Robin. So I said, oh, hello again. And I walked on. And he kept following me along the path until he met another Robin in a bit of a barn. In, but uh, it made me slow down and pay attention to the woodland around me, to the symphony of birdsong, and it is very loud at this time of year, to the rustlings in the undergrowth and in the hawthorn blossom and the greening branches. And of course there were the ubiquitous pigeons and the crows, and the local family of blackbirds and the sparrows and the squirrels chasing each other around the trees. But the more I looked, the more I saw a blue tit, a missile thrush, a wren, a woodpecker, even a little water vole watching me from the undergrowth beside the stream. And it's not that any of these creatures were particularly remarkable, but what was remarkable is that I saw anything at all. Because usually when I'm in thinking mode, my thoughts are turned inward, and I'm looking at the path that I'm walking on, even though by this time my feet could probably walk the path with my eyes closed, which of course, figuratively, usually they are. But this week was different. This week, I opened my eyes and my mind to the environment in which I was walking. 
Now, our gospel reading follows immediately on from the story of the two disciples that walked all the way from Jerusalem to Emmaus with Jesus, but not seeing him, not recognizing him. And it wasn't until they sat down with him and he broke bread that they recognized him. He was revealed to them and then he disappeared. So they rushed back to Jerusalem to share this incredible news with the other disciples. And it was while they were still discussing this extraordinary occurrence that Jesus appeared in their midst, as we heard in our gospel story. But even though the disciples had just heard this news, still they could not believe that this was Jesus in the flesh. They could not recognize him. They thought he was a ghost, an apparition. So he had to show them his hands and his feet. And even then, they still couldn't quite grasp it. So he had to eat some boiled fish to prove that he was really there in flesh and blood. And then later on, as we heard in our Acts reading, when uh, Peter and John had gone to the temple and had cured a person who had been crippled from birth. And all the Israelites came round were amazed. And he said to them, you did not recognize Jesus as your Messiah. And in rejecting him before Pilate, you killed the author of life. And they didn't even recognize Jesus in the healing of this man. But he just said to them, it is by faith in his name that this man is made strong. So the question for us is this. Do we recognize Jesus today? We say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And we respond. Yes, we do. Just checking you away. He is risen. Present tense. That is one of the tenets of our faith, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That he was raised on Easter morning. That we might have eternal life and that he sits at God's right hand. And that he is active in the world by his Holy Spirit. But do we recognize him? The problem is that for many of us who go through life, like I go on my thinking walks, with thoughts turned inward, eyes focused on the path that we are treading through life, even if that path is well worn, if we could walk it with our eyes shut. But if we slow down and we pay attention to the world around us, to the people around us, we will see God at work. We will see Jesus at work in our own lives. But does it matter? Do we need to see Jesus at work? Couldn't we just get on with our lives, doing our usual thing and let Jesus do what Jesus does best? Well, there are two things I would say to that. One is that when I opened my eyes and my mind to the wildlife around me, I was filled with such joy. I had this beaming smile on my face. Quite what other people on the path thought, I don't know. But it was pure joy. And in the same way, when we see God at work in people around us, when we see God at work in our own lives, it is a joyous thing. It is an encouragement to our faith.
and it draws us closer to God. It encourages us to be more open to him. The other thing I would say is that as I became more aware of the wildlife around me, I also became more aware of the things that were detrimental to it. The litter, the fallen branch clogging the stream, the plastic bottle bobbing up and down in the waterfall, the pipe spewing soap suds into the water. And these are things that I could do something about. It is one of the marks of mission after all, that we should care for God's creation. And in the same way, when we pay attention to the world around us, then we become aware of things that are detrimental to the work of the Spirit. Two more marks of mission are to uh, respond to human need with loving service. As we heard in our uh, epistle reading in John. If we have worldly wealth and do nothing about those in need, then what good is that? Another mark of mission is to challenge unjust structures of society, to speak out for those that cannot speak for themselves. Perhaps there are habits or activities in our own lives that are detrimental to the flourishing of God's love. We all lead busy lives, but I would encourage you occasionally to slow down and to pay attention to the people and the world around you. Where is Jesus at work? Give thanks for that. Where is Jesus calling you to join in? Perhaps you might respond. But above all, just recognise Jesus and enjoy him for who he is. Amen. So I invite you to stand as we declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do sit for our prayers of intercession.
Lord Jesus Christ, you have said that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Suffer us not to stray from you who are the way, nor to distrust you who are the truth, nor to rest in anything other than you who are the life. Knowing that the risen Christ is here among us, we pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your blessing on every group of Christians worshipping today all over the world. We remember especially our linked diocese in Harare and the Church of Ireland. We pray for all who doubt your truth and ask that fired by your love, we may walk as children of light. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for all the areas of your world which are torn apart by hatred and violence, by famine, disease, or religious difference. We pray for an end to war and a deeper commitment to peace. We bring before you all those who feel marginalized and oppressed. We remember the people of Yemen, of Myanmar, of Syria, and the Ouija community in China. We pray for an easing of tensions between Hong Kong and China, between the police and black communities in America, and in Northern Ireland. We ask that understanding, compassion, and justice may prevail. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we pray for the streets and places of work we represent. We pray for our local hospitals and for those involved in administering the COVID vaccine. We pray for our community in Southborough and for our church family here at St Thomas. May we proclaim the truth of your love, both at home and at work by the way we live and handle the everyday situations we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Father, we pray for all who are sick, especially those known to us and those on our prayer board. We pray for all who are weighed down with doubts, fears or misgivings. All who are haunted by the past or afraid of the future. We ask that they may know awareness of your constant presence and have the courage to trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Father, we commend to your love those who have reached the end of their journey on earth. And we remember especially today, Molly Nottage and Diana Young. Welcome them into your heavenly kingdom and give them everlasting peace. Strengthen and comfort all who mourn. We bring before you the family and friends of Diana and Judith and her family as they prepare for Molly's funeral this week. May all who grieve know the consolation of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And now may God the Father bless us. May Christ take care of us. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our life. The Lord be our defender and keeper of body and soul, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Amen. accept Amen. these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Um. I invite you to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
Let us offer one another a sign of peace as we have become accustomed. Peace be with you all. Peace with you all as you too. So we pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. And when we come to the distribution of communion, um, for those of you who have not been before, um, I will dip a wafer in the wine and hand it to you unless you uh, don't want to take the wine in which case I will just give you the wafer and if you could just indicate that to me as you come up if you could come up the middle and return around the outside um, then that will just make sure that we limit the amount of um, passing by close to people uh, and if you could just make sure that you keep two meters as you come up uh, to the front The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. 
and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Thomas and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, we continue our prayers together. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect only our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. And our final hymn is Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
just before our blessing, uh, a couple of things to say. Um, one is that, of course, um, uh, Molly's funeral will be on Thursday. Um, and um, there is a link on the notice sheet. Uh, it's not the usual church number for Zoom. Um, but so if you would like to, uh, to join, um, then it is, a, it is a Zoom connection, but it's slightly different format. Um, so that uh, when you click on the link, you'll be asked to uh, put in uh, an email address um, because it's set up uh, using a, a seminar mode, which means that when you join, you'll just see the church, but not everyone else uh, who is watching. Um, so you are very welcome uh, to, to join at that. Um, Next Sunday, we have our APCM. And so uh, I do encourage you to join that on Zoom at two o'clock. Uh, and um, we are hoping that people will feel moved to join PCC. Um, so, um, please do consider that. And the uh, forms are on the website, on the church website, and you can download them from there. Um, and also uh, today is the last day that you can um, join the uh, electoral roll if you are um, resident in the parish or uh, have been coming for six months, um, or if you need to change uh, details for any reason, um, the, today is the, is the last day. So if you do need to make any changes, then please contact Roger, who is, uh, looks after the electoral role. Um, Oh yes, and the last thing is that the paperwork for the APCM is on the website. If you go to the website and click on the home, uh, the word home, and it gives you a drop down menu and at the bottom you'll see APCM 2021 and that's where all the paperwork is and the reports. So you can look at them there. I think that is everything. Anything else is on the notice sheet. Oh, if for some reason you haven't had a notice sheet, um, could you let me have your email address afterwards and I'll make sure that you do get one so that you've got all the links there. So I invite you to stand for our blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.